What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's solve a common ask problem in data science interviews together. The problem is how to test if a coin is fair or not. There are a few different versions of the problem, which is designed to test your understanding of the binomial distribution as well as hypothesis testing. The core question being asked is the same in all versions of the problem, and it is how to test the hypothesis that a coin is fair. In this video, we are going to discuss the most open-ended version of this problem, which is the following. How would you design an experiment to test if a coin is a fair coin or not? By the end of this video, you will have a clear idea on how to solve this problem. Maybe you already know how to solve it, then you can compare your idea with mine. Let's get started. Before we discuss this version of the problem, we need to be familiar with several concepts, including the binomial distribution and the hypothesis testing. And you might be familiar with them at this point. So let's do a quick recap. The binomial distribution describes the number of successes in a sequence of n independent trials, where k is the number of successful trials and p is the probability of success. Number of heads of multiple coin flips follow a binomial distribution because they have a binary outcome and each flip is independent. We can refer to the number of flips as the number of trials n and the probability of heads and the probability of success p. Now let's take a look at our question of how to design an experiment to test whether or not a coin is fair. Unlike many coin problems, we are not given the outcome or number of tosses. To test if a coin is fair or not, we have two different tests we can use. One option is to use a binomial test when we have small number of samples. The other option is to use a z-test with a large sample size. In this question, there's no requirement on the number of flips, so we can choose either a binomial test or a z-test to solve the problem. But the better option is a z-test with a large amount of flips because the power is larger with a larger sample size. It means that with a large number of coin flips, the chance the test correctly rejects the null hypothesis is higher. Now, let's go over the steps to solving the problem together. The first step is to specify the null and alternative hypothesis. In this case, we assume the coin is a fair coin under the null hypothesis and set the null hypothesis to be p equals to 0.5. Let's also set the significance level alpha to be 0.05, which is a common use significance level. The second step is to determine the number of tosses we need to perform the z-test. In other words, how many tosses are needed to conduct the z-test with sufficient power given our selected significance level. For now, let's set our number of tosses to be a thousand. Under the null hypothesis, the test statistic approximately follows a standard normal distribution. In the numerator, we have n multiplied by p hat which is the observed number of successful trials. The probability of success p represents the probability of success under the null hypothesis. So n multiplied by p is the number of heads under the null hypothesis. In the denominator, we have the standard deviation of the binomial distribution. We can also use k to denote the observed number of successes, and k is the same as n multiplied by p hat. Now, we can compute the mean and the standard deviation of number of heads under the null hypothesis. Let's plug the mean and the standard deviation into the formula for the test statistic. The next step is to get the threshold for the observed number of successes, k. We can define success as a head or a tail. Either way, the threshold is a number of successes under the null hypothesis. If we observe a number of successes within the threshold, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude the coin is fair. Otherwise, we reject the null hypothesis. To calculate the threshold, we can find the critical value based on our choice of the significance level, 0.05. The critical z-score values when using a 95% confidence level are negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 standard deviations. Because we are doing a two-sided test, the critical z-score can be a negative value or a positive value. Now, we are able to calculate the threshold of number of successes, and we get k is larger than 469 and less than 530.98. Therefore, the number of observed heads should be no less than 469 and should not exceed 531 
in order for us to be convinced that the coin is a fair coin. This applies to the number of tails as well. Otherwise, we reject the null hypothesis and we are convinced that the coin is biased. Now, let's summarize what we have learned in this lesson. We learned one of the three versions of the coin problems, which is how to design an experiment to determine whether or not a coin is fair. To determine whether a coin is fair or not, we can design an experiment to toss a coin a thousand times. If the coin is fair, we should observe 469 to 531 heads, and the same applies to tails. Otherwise, we should reject the null hypothesis and be convinced the coin is biased. All right, that's everything for this video. If you enjoyed it, you may also want to check out this playlist on solving more statistics-related problems. I talk a lot about data science, data science interviews, as well as tips and strategies to land your dream job in the tech industry. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to get updates about future content. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.